Hello, this is Nitin Dahad with the Times. I'm here at uh, uh, DAC 2025 in San Francisco and on the Siemens EDA booth talking to Mike Ello, who's the CEO of Siemens EDA. Mike, hello, how are you? Good morning, Nitin. Pleasure to see you. Good how to see you? you too. Um, you're different without the bow tie. <laughs> <laughs> a little inside joke, I did wear a bow tie, but I hope there's no photos of that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there will be. I, you wear the bow tie, that is your... Your shtick, not mine. Well, I came prepared today, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> but with, not with a bow tie. Anyway, um, let's talk about um, the world, yeah. uh, what's happening in the world, and how does that impact what you're doing? I mean, there's quite a few big megatrends, uh, and, I, and I think, yeah, we see on the show floor, everybody's talking about AI, and you've got AI launches, but let's, let's go a little bit higher first and then drill down. Okay, sure. So, you know, as, as we start taking a look at what's going on in the world around us, right, what we're finding as we, we look around the world, that semiconductors are becoming more and more important to society. Mm. And we see a number of trends that are driving that. I, I think the first big trend that we see, um, and it's been emerging for a number of years, is that many of the customers and our customers' customers that we serve are really pivoting away from the traditional values for differentiation. Right, bending metal and forming plastic, you know, as, as far as being the differentiation in the past, is necessary but no longer sufficient as we really look at a hard pivot around software. Mm. Software defines the, the value for a lot of these companies going into the future, and so we see that the entire system itself is built around that software workload and the system is designed to optimize the software workload. So what we see in the way we talk about it is something that is software defined, as far as driving the value, uh, the, the differentiation, AI powered, because that is supercharging now that software workload, sitting on top of something that is silicon enabled. So purpose uh, built silicon in order to um, provide the optimized environment to run that software. Mm. And, and so that's one of the, the biggest trends. And to me, the inflection point that delivers against that is what's happening in 3DIC, right? Because 3DIC gives the opportunity now to more discreetly match a, a silicon platform to that actual software workload. So there's a connectivity, I think, between the emergence of software driving value, but the infrastructure with 3DIC to support that. That's number one. That's quite a uh, yeah, yeah, good yeah, way of putting yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so, so, so number two, uh, I mean, no conversation is complete unless we talk about AI. Yeah. And, and so AI, though, is, is an, an interesting opportunity for, for us from the standpoint that um, really the potential is limited by the imagination of engineers. Hmm. So you can imagine that the number of designs going into the future is going to increase dramatically based on AI applications. Yeah. But there's a, a natural conflict inherent to that is that we take a look at our industry and our senior engineers are moving on. Universities aren't graduating enough new engineers so we've got this dilemma of a lot more design volume being done by fewer engineers that are earlier in career. And that's where, when we talk a little bit later today about EDA and AI is really coming in to fill that gap to enable mm. a, a next generation of engineering talent to take advantage of the collective wisdom that mm. they have from their company that they're part of and a level of efficiency in order to drive the, 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 the requirements associated with all these, these designs. Yeah, I mean, I do hear experience is retiring quite, in, I've been hearing it quite a lot here. Yeah. And, you, and what's interesting, you know, you walk around the floor, there is a, a you know, a, a very big bifurcation of the people that you see, yeah. as far as the experienced ones that have been around for a while. And then what's really encouraging though, is that there is a enthusiasm out there for next generation engineers coming into the semiconductor market, even as we take a look at our hiring trends for what we've been doing. We've been very successful with hiring a lot of earlier in career engineers who actually want to get into EDA and write software. Yeah. Well, so it's, <laughs> it's, it's, well, it's a good thing, right? Yeah. Because you know, we're not to the point yet where their software is writing itself. Yeah, so number three. Number, number three, um, sustainability. Yeah. So uh, you know, the, the society has been asking corporations for decades about you know, better use of our natural resources and a lot of the companies say this is a wonderful idea but we don't know how to do that and still make money. Well, semiconductors are the answer to a lot of industries, and I'll use data centers as an example, right? Mm. Data centers right now, power consumption is, is unsustainable through time. So the operators of these data centers are taking a look at, well, how do I get more compute resource inside of the existing power footprint that I have? And the answer is? Semiconductors. Semiconductors, silicon. of course. Yeah, yeah. silicon. Yeah. And then the last trend, which is, is interesting out there, is, is you know, what I call silicon nationalism, right? You know, 
the, 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 the COVID pandemic really exposed the fragility of the silicon supply chain worldwide. And a lot of countries woke up and said, oh my God, if I don't have access to silicon, it's a disruption to society or our very way of life. And so you saw a lot of countries that had promised to start spending money to onshore manufacturing. And progress is a little bit up and down, but what's really refreshing is that you can see that Japan has actually been at the forefront of this with what they've been doing with Rapidus. And I think they can show the rest of the world about government investment into onshoring more advanced node capacity for manufacturing can be successful. That's back to the future. That's what they had many, many years ago. So, I mean, it, it's, it's nice to see that you can see Japan now coming full circle, yeah. making those investments for two nanometers and below. And, and you've got an involvement in that? Uh, We've got a very big this week. In, in, in involvement with Rapidus, and we're very excited with what we're doing with them. And we're looking forward to attending the opening of uh, the FAB coming up in uh, July. There's an interesting uh, press release I saw today, which basically say, talked about foundry capacity around the world in 2030, and Japan does come quite strong in that. So, yeah. Yeah, well, If you look at the, the, the shift, you know, where wafers were developed over the past 10 years, where the planned wafer starts will be in the next 10 years, it's a dramatic increase in a lot of areas that had been behind. Mm. So it's, there's a lot of things going on out there. Let's move to um, uh, your announcements. I mean, okay. obviously one of them was uh, uh, the, the announcement with Siemens and Rapidus, but uh, on the product side, I think you've got uh, the AI announcements and the 3DIC, but yeah. let's talk about AI. Uh, what, have you, what have you been uh, talking about here at DAC? Okay. So, of course, you know, AI has been big for a number of years and, and our announcements have been very product-centric through time. What we've done differently this year and, and what I'd like the, you know, your viewers to take notice of is that we're reestablishing a, a, a branding around Siemens EDA, right? So if you take a look at how we're talking about ourselves with AI, we're starting first with what we're doing at a Siemens EDA level with delivering an EDAI infrastructure that is actually servicing all of our tools. And then tagged onto that, you saw some announcements around Apresa AI, Vision yep. AI coming out of Caliber, and then some AI products coming out of Solito, who of mm. course are the, the, the OG for AI and EDA. They've been doing it since 2005, and I'm very happy to say Ahmed and team for the basis of our central AI team because you know we've got a, a lot of pedigree associated with what they're doing. So um, we think we've got a fabulous team that are providing an enablement for this infrastructure. We think there's some uniqueness associated with the AI infrastructure that we delivered and announced. It's open. Hmm. So such that you know there's a set of qualified data sources that come from us with our app notes and our manuals and things like that. There's customer data. But it also will take in data from any sources out Is, there. Isn't that I mean, that's different to what we've been seeing in the market up to now, isn't, isn't it? Yes, compared to what some other um, options are out there as far as, as EDA infrastructure, EDAI infrastructure, you know, they're very focused on the information from the domains that they are servicing from that company. Yeah. You know, whereas we're taking a look at it saying, you know, AI is more useful, it's, it's extensible across the entire design scope itself, including having, um, APIs at the, the top level for our customers to build their own applications so they can access their own data. We've got flexibility on the LLM that can come in. It doesn't mm. matter if a customer wants to bring their own or if they want to use the one that we deliver with it. You know, we've got security parameters around it. This is all sitting on prem or within a customer's data center such that they can be ensured as they go train the model moving forward with their data, that is all for them and it does not leak out to you know, their competitors. Mm. And then on top of it, we've got the data or the, the security protocols that are already in place from the customer such that the, the user base in that customer only has access to that data which is relevant to their job. So we're very excited about the open infrastructure associated with it, the security we provide with it. Plus it's the service engine that sits as the foundation for all of the AI deliverables that we have. And what do we see, are you seeing any early sort of adoption from beta customers or anything like that? What are they saying? So, you know, the, the, the first order deliverable is the relatively uninteresting chatbots that sit as far okay. as data sources that sit within all the tools so the customer can have ready access to information they need, you know, using uh, natural language as the interface to it. You know, we've moved on though to, to building out a series of agents now that are in it. And again, Salido has been leading the way for how that looks as far as being able to access AI and have it operate by itself within a set of defined constraints. Hmm. Um, of course, the, 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 
the next evolution of this is, is where everyone's pointing to is the whole idea of agentic AI where we can actually have the AI system itself do all the planning and execution, calling all of the various engines that it needs from all the tools, you know, but that's still a, a little bit out as we're building out the framework. But we've seen an early demo here on uh, one of the booths here. Yeah, yeah, so it's, 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 it's quite interesting, isn't it? Yeah. It offers a lot more flexibility, but this all ties back to what we talked about earlier with workforce development and where we are with the engineering talent and how do we enable them with a series, a, a set of technologies to drive efficiency. But also, you know, to me, the beauty of it is also giving them that wisdom, the knowledge base from the company that they're a part of by sucking in all the data from all the, the previous design generations that have happened there. So there's a, there's a lot of, of opportunity and upside for Okay, last this. question. Uh, what do we expect from you uh, in 12 months time, you know, when we sit here at DAC? <laughs> what, what, what do, where's the world going to be? <laughs> so, you know, it's an interesting question because I've, 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 I've You don't uh, have a crystal ball, but still. <laughs> where, what I think though, yeah. is that, you know, if we take a look at AI in the semiconductor design, there's mm. still a raised eyebrow from a number of engineers saying, you know, can I trust what I see here? You know, so so as we take a look at our deliverables around, you know, verifiability of what's what the algorithms are, the usability across a wide range of, of skill sets, the generality such that it can address all the different domains, a robustness so that it works inside of all of the different user environments and then the accuracy of itself. Mm because that's how we phrase what we deliver with industrial grade AI, which is the foundation for what we're doing. 12 months from now, mm. I think what we're going to see is a, a, a bigger usage by the design community because they're going to they're going to get to a tipping point where they say, you know what, we can trust what we're seeing from these systems. We need to embrace it more vigorously because we just can't get the job done without it. Because even today, what we see is pressure from upper management onto the engineering teams to say, how are you using more AI? The engineering teams are still trying to push back because they're saying, well, wait, 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 we need to trust this thing. We're going to go, I think, in the next 12 months, cross that horizon. Cross We've that seen that in the EE Times Mind of the Engineer survey and that yeah. AI is, is creeping up. So yes, you're right. I think adoption is probably going to be much greater. And so when we're here at DAC next year, we're going to see the explosion of, of, a, of a better set of results that are concrete that we can talk about maybe then some of the fluffy stuff. They may have. not need me or you then. Well, they'll always need you. They need a good looking face to get out there to all the users. All right, well, Mike, <laughs> thank you very much. It's my pleasure. Thank Great. you.